So I'm starting. So um, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for joining this session today with me about Podman. It will be an introduction of Podman. And before to start, uh, I would like to do um, I would like to, to say an important fact. So um, it's not a comparison. It's, I will not do a comparison between Docker or Podman. Um, the two products is very nice. I use on the past a lot of uh, Docker. Uh, it's nice. Um, so, um, so no, this is share the same DNA. Uh, it's open source, so uh, no war between products. Um, Docker, it's nice product, uh, but it's a bit hot. <laughs> so, um, hello everybody. Um, my name is Pierre Blanc. I come from Red Hat. I'm software engineer and I live in Canada. So, uh, I think this one it will be very uh, useful in the next month. Um, on the last. Uh, open source summit session. Um, we al already have some uh, presentation of Podman, but they, they were more about um, by um, developer or architect. It's not the case on, on mine. Um, I'm not a developer of the product itself, but more a user. Um, I'm using it every day. Um, I'm using also a lot of Podman and um, like Kubernetes. And my job is to work with partners to, um, to do um, um, to help them to own the container journey. So sometimes they're using, uh, they are using a virtual machine, sometimes they are using, uh, they are still using bar meta. So my goal is to help them, them on, on the, to understand what is the containerization and how to use it. Uh, my target is, uh, is to use Kubernetes, uh, so a container orchestrator. So I already did this kind of presentation uh, for, um, for a partner. Uh, it will be um, about the capacities of Pondman. Um, so I will start uh, with a very short introduction on what is Pondman, why we have Pondman, when it's, it's released. Uh, then we will see how to use it uh, with command line demo. And I will continue with, uh, to, to, to explain what the, next, the nice feature of Pondman and a quick introduction of the ecosystem. And I will finish uh, with the con conclusion and, and questions. So let's define first uh, what is Pondman, why it exists, and uh, how it works. So Podman, it's a container compliance OCI, uh, but, but Podman is not only a container manager, it's also a pod manager. So introduced by Kubernetes, a pod is a group of containers deployed for a common purpose. Podman is also secure by design. We have a specific section of security inside this presentation that explains what is rootless, demandless, Linux capabilities, and more. Uh, of course, Podman is open source, as all the other products that Red Hat supports. And um, it's um, a multi-platform. So when we speak about a container or a Docker container, uh, what is this? It's a Linux container. So it's very easy to start a container on the host, on Linux host, or on Linux um, server, or Linux laptop. But when we want to spawn a container on Windows uh, or Mac OS, it's, it's not the same. So uh, Podman creates a layer between the host and itself to be able to run container inside this kind of uh, operating system. Uh, with Podman, we have also a very rich ecosystem with a lot of uh, available image or a lot of tools to manage and interact with a registry, create image, and, um, and container. So we see uh, what uh, is Podman now, why we have Podman. So the goal of the Podman, initial goal, was to create and um, an offer a way to test Cryo. Uh, Cryo, it's a runtime for Kubernetes. So that explains why Podman is very close to Kubernetes. Um, the goal was to offer a secure project and uh, a way to manage easy pod in a local environment. So, of course, Podman is compliant with OCI for con container and, and images. And it, fu it fully um, integrates a lot of features that we can find in the um, uh, Fedora and CentOS uh, operating system base, like Systemd, so Linux integration. But before to speak about Podman, I would like to, to show you a very short uh, story of the, the short story of open source container uh, since the beginning. 
So um, it's a list, this list is not exhaustive, of course. We have a lot of different projects and products between each date. But uh, for me, it's, uh, it's important. It's the most important for me. So everything started with sh Shroot. Uh, so it's here from the beginning. It's on the core util uh, from uh, 1996. Um, then we have Linux V server, OpenVZ. So it's a real first um, container. And in 2008, uh, C group was merged on the kernel, and uh, it's uh, it's a year also or the year of uh, LXC. So uh, from this date, we we have the first uh, full manage um, and um, container that work out of the box. In 2013, Docker creates uh, it's very um, huge ecosystem uh, about um, about container. So it facilitates uh, the user to use container. So I think uh, at this date. Uh, more and more users switch to container. So uh, thanks again, uh, Docker. And, um, and Kubernetes was released in 2014. Uh, so it provides a framework to run a distributed system with resilience. It takes care of scaling or failover for your application. So um, a nice date. And in 2017, finally, uh, we have Pondman. So the story of container is, is long. It's not uh, a new thing. And we have a lot of different projects and products that contribute to, to the um, containerization um, environment. So, uh, for Pondman, the first uh, commit uh, dates to 2017, so five years already. And the first release in 2018. Uh, I found more than 120 releases on the Git repository if I exclude the release candidate. And the, the last version is the 4.2.1. It just released this month. So we saw uh, what is Pondman, why it's where Pondman. Now let's check uh, how it's work. So it's a very simple schema. Uh, we have the OCI engine that talks with the OCI runtime that finally talk to the Linux kernel. So it's very important. The OCI is very important as we have a OCI every time. Um, and OCI, it's um, Open Container Initiative. It's a Linux Foundation uh, project, and it provides specification standard uh, about um, container. So we have um, runtime specification, we have distribution specification, we have image specification, and all these specifications are very important because one box can easily communicate with another. And if you build uh, your image with Pondman, it will work on Docker, it will work on Kubernetes, because all this project follows the OCI specification. Uh, for OCI engine, we have Pondman, but we can also have Docker. For OCI runtime, we have RunC, but you have also Cron. So you have a lot of different um, projects for each box, and you, you have to choose which one is the best for you, uh, regarding to your use your, your case. Sorry. So before to finish the introduction, I would like to, to add a very short word about uh, images. So they are very important because all the containers are based on one image. Um, they must follow the OCI certification, specification, sorry. Uh, they use layer. So when you build an image, you just have to take a public one and add your stuff on it. Uh, the recipe to build an image is very simple. It's a plain text file and it's understandable. Uh, an image is just a tar, finally, uh, with all the file of the file system of the image. And uh, an image is uh, distributed by a registry. So it is the, it is the introduction. Uh, now I think you have a better view of what is Pondman. And uh, the next step is to use it. So I will go through all the major behavior of Pondman. Um, so the first topic is the images, uh, how to manage that. Uh, then we will create a container and interact with it. Uh, we'll see volume and we will finish with uh, the pod. So how to create pod, how to use a pod in Pondman. So uh, to use Pondman, you have the Pondman command and it's very similar to the Docker command. <coughs> so all the options that you have in Pondman, uh, Docker, you, you have it in Docker. You, all the options that you have in Docker, you have it in Pondman. So if you are a Docker user, you, you are not lost. Um, some, some guys also create an alias to continue to, to do the Docker pon command, but they use uh, the, the back, in the backend the Podman. So I said almost 
uh, all Docker command is uh, compatible with Podman. Uh, only one is not compatible, it's Docker Swarm. Um, because uh, Podman uh, chooses uh, Kubernetes as the orchestrator of container. So let's start to, uh, to image. When you want to manage um, and use image uh, with Podman, you have the Podman images command. Um, you have also a lot of uh, short command. So you have Podman image, geez, sorry, to do a Podman image list. Uh, you have uh, Podman pool, etc. Um, all the interaction that you can have the, with the um, image um, is often uh, with um, to, to the re registry. Sorry, so an image reg registry it's a bucket, um, on the, and on this bucket you, you have a lot of images. So all cloud providers provide uh, their own um, registry. Uh, so Google have one, uh, Azure, Amazon have one too. Uh, in my case, I'm using a lot of uh, docker.io and que.io because they are public and free. But it exists a lot of solutions. You can also install your own uh, registry in your infrastructure. Um, and uh, it's based, it can be based on the open source uh, project. So let's uh, do the demo. Uh, I don't know if everybody see my screen. Um, so what I have, um, I'm doing uh, Podman images. Uh, to see all the, the, the image on my uh, local server. I have nothing, so oh, I don't have the same thing uh, between the two screens. So I'm doing uh, Podman images. I have nothing. I can uh, get um, an image with Podman image pool. So on this example, I, I'm getting uh, the Im Alpine image. Uh, and after that, uh, I can see that I have my image on my um, environment with Podman image list or Podman images. So I have an, another demo. It's to, uh, to, to interact with a registry. So with Podman, we have a feature to do that. Um, we will see on the next of the presentation, we have another project that the name is Coscopeo, that we have a better integration with registry. But on this example, I'm just um, doing a Podman image search with uh, the name of the image that I want to search on the registry. Uh, in my case, I test with Paul Alpine. So I have a lot of image uh, with Alpine. And I have a filter to, to get only the official image of Alpine. So with a filter is official. And with that, I will get only one uh, result because only one is official. It is this one and can uh, pull this one if I want. I also have an, an option is format uh, JSON. So this uh, option is available for all the Podman command. I can, with this, we can get a result on JSON of the command. So it can be, can be useful if you want to parse it or if you want to get and have more information about the image. About the life cycle, so now we will see how to create a container, how to list the container, how to stop and restart the container. So it's a podman container command. And you also have a shortcut like podman run, podman ps, etc. So yes, uh, on this example, I will create a container. So first, I'm, uh, I'm checking if I have some container running on my uh, server. So I have nothing. Now I'm checking if I can uh, access to the port 8080 of my server. Um, is not, I have nothing uh, listed on the port. So I'm running a container. Um, with the option P, it's just for forward the port. So uh, the port 8080 of my um, local server will go to the port 80 of my container. Uh, so I execute the command to run the container, and now I have my container is running. And if I, uh, I curl again, uh, I will see something. So um, let's speak a bit uh, about volumes. So uh, with Podman, like uh, with Docker, you can uh, mount volume inside uh, your container. So to do that, you have the option dash V. And you have also the, the way to create a named uh, volume. Something that's very important here, it's SO Linux. So a lot of people deactivate SO Linux. So I know that. <laughs> uh, and I think on this room, maybe somebody deactivated. it. And uh, SO Linux is not complicated. Uh, so 80% 
or maybe 90% of the issue that you, that you can have in SE Linux can be fixed with the command SE manage. So with SE manage, you can modify the context of the file, of the units, and you ready, you, you can fix all your issue almost with that. So uh, SE Linux provides an additional layer of security uh, for your system, so it's a good thing. So think about that. Maybe you can, and it can be a new, nice idea to reactivate SE Linux. And Pondman, with Pondman, you can easily manage uh, SE Linux uh, issue or, or configuration. Um, so I will show you that. So on this example, I will uh, create a container and I will mount um, a directory to, to modify the index.html. Uh, so I have an index.html in my local um, environment. So I use the dash v directory, so it's a source to the destination of my, on my container, user, share, and nix. And at the end, I put the option z. And with the z, it will relabel uh, your directory. Uh, and with this, uh, SLinux uh, will work perfectly. So now I'm curled on the port 8080, and I have my new index that it shows. User dependent. So I go through of all a lot of um, features, but this one is very important uh, because when you're connected on the um, on server with uh, Pondman, each user can have its own container. So you don't need a special configuration. You just have to connect to the server with my user and start to play with Pondman. All the images, all the container will be stored on my home directory. I don't need to be a root. I don't need to, to be a part of the group. It will work out of the box. And for example, uh, so on this example, I have a container that is run in, um, in the root uh, user. So, and I'm just waiting a bit because uh, it is the end of the demo. <laughs> so uh, on, this, uh, on this demo, uh, I will run two containers, one by the root and one by a normal user. And we will see that um, user not see a container of other user. So I, am, I activated the SLinux, so it's on force. I'm checking if I am something on the port 80. So yes, I am something because just before I run a container uh, with root. So if I uh, sudo pondman ps, I will see the container that is start by the root user. Now, if I check the image that the root user have, uh, I can see yeah, I have one images, one image. Now I don't use the sudo command. I just use pondman images. And I can see the images are different because each user has his own image and his own uh, container. So I can see that Podman PS, so I don't have any uh, container running or with a normal user. So my, I will just start a new container uh, with a normal user. And on this example, I have container that's running with root and other with my normal user. So it's just an example, but uh, and I, I run with root, but I can run multiple containers with multiple users. Uh, no limit. Uh, we don't have any limit with that. And let's check now um, the pods. So uh, as I said, pods is the it's um, the group of containers. Um, they are using uh, for the common purpose, so it can be an application. Uh, on your application, you can have, for, for example, a backend, uh, frontend, or multiple frontend, etc. Uh, everything, everything can be grouped uh, on the on the pod. And if you want to stop your pod, your application, it will stop all the container of the pod. If you want to clone your application, if you are, for example, on your application ten container, you want to clone it to application two, you have a command to that, and it will clone uh, very uh, easily all the container inside the pod. So to manage the pod, it's podmat pod. It's not complicated. So on this example, um, what I will do, I will create a pod, put two containers inside, 
and do some life cycle and see what's happened. So let's check first if I have something in the port 8080. So I have nothing because no containers are running. Um, I'm creating a new container and, and add the, the option dash dash pod. With the dash dash pod, I put new column app. So it will create a new uh, pod. Uh, the name will be app. On this new app pod, I create a container uh, for the website. And I create another. Uh, so I put the dash dash pod with the app. Uh, I put a new uh, container. It will be the database. So on my pod, now I have two containers, one for web, other for, for uh, database. So if I podman ps or pod ps, I will see my pod. And on my pod, I have three containers just here. Three containers because I always have one container to manage a pod. So if I podman ps, I will see the three containers, the HTTP container, the MariaDB container, and the pod container. Now, if I stop my application, it will stop all my container. If I start my, my application, again, it will start uh, all my container. So it is a way to manage a pod in Podman. Of course, we have other way. We have an import and export uh, feature that I will explain when I will um, uh, explain uh, what the, the connection between that we have between Podman and, Kub and Kubernetes. So on this section, I will sp speak about uh, what is um, the big feature that we have in Podman and what is interesting. So I will speak about um, the security. Uh, I will speak about uh, Linux, capa Linux capability, S Linux. Uh, we, I will give you a short introduction of the ecosystem of Podman, and we will see what, what is the possibility that we have with uh, Podman and uh, Kubernetes. So uh, Podman is rootless, so you don't, uh, you don't have to, 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 to give sorry, a special right to your, uh, to your user. As I showed just before, you just have um, uh, you just need a, a login on the server, and you can start to run a container. No group uh, are needed, and, and nothing is run on root. So it reduces the, um, the, the possibility to, 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 to hack your system, finally. All the containers are owned by um, the user, um, and nothing is owned by root. Uh, so Podman is also daemonless, so you don't have a single point of failure. You don't have a daemon that is managed all the, the, the container. And uh, every time that you create a new container, it just creates a new, uh, a new, um, new process. And uh, it's user on demand because uh, you don't have a daemon. Uh, it's daemonless. Uh, if, you, for example, you upgrade, upgrade your system, and if you upgrade um, Podman, it will not stop all your container, because uh, each container has its own uh, process. About security. Uh, so because it's rootless and demontless, uh, a lot of it's increased a lot of security of the container manager, <laughs> because they reduce the root uh, usage. Um, about SO Linux, uh, for me, it should be always activate. Um, it's, uh, it's add a layer of security. It's very nice. And we have also a, a project that the name is Udica, and it can help you to, to manage the SO Linux rule uh, for your container. Um, if, for example, you have a very complex uh, container or pod, uh, you can run Udica for um, the running container. It will create a lot of rules um, as a Linux module, and you can use this module for this um, in, in local, or you can also put in other server to load with SO, SO manage and the module. Uh, we also have Linux capabilities. So Linux capabilities can limit the power of the super user. Um, on the Linux kernel, um, the Linux kernel splits the privilege, privilege of, of, root, of root, sorry, the super user, in different units. And this unit, it's Linux capabilities. And because Podman is rootless, 
even if, uh, if you use a dash dash privilege, uh, the container will never use and will never have access uh, to the host in a, in a, root, um, in a root mode. SecComp now you have. Uh, so SecComp is used to filter the syscall of the system. So fewer the syscall is available and smaller the attack is surface is. Uh, so it's very un interesting also uh, for the security. And by default, um, Podman dropped many syscall, but we have option to drop uh, many more. And I put the two link because there is a very uh, interesting link about all the security around Podman and they give you a lot of example and how it's work uh, in deep. About the ecosystem, so we have Builda. Um, Builda is a tool, so you have Podman, Builda, uh, Udica, I said, uh, to SLE Linux. We have Builda, it's to, to build the image. So you can build the image with Podman build, but you have, we have a special uh, tool, um, and it adds some nice features. Uh, for example, you can build your image avec, with your uh, Docker file, but with Builda, it allows you to access to the interactive mode, so you load your image, you can modify it, and create an image with uh, your modification. So it's very easy to modify and debug an image if you have issue uh, with, um, with the image. Or if you want to test a specific thing on, the, on an image, you just have to load it and start to play with it. Scopeo. Scopeo is part of the ecosystem of, of Podman. It's a tool to copy um, Container, so you can uh, take a container from a reg registry and uh, move it or duplicate it in another registry. Uh, you can use it also to sync uh, multiple registry. You can also do it uh, some action on registry like um, pushing or just delete uh, images. And you also can inspect um, container, so uh, it can give you a lot of information of one, uh, one image on a, a registry. And finally, uh, the connection between Podman and Kubernetes um, is done by two uh, process, import and export. So for the import, if you have your, your Kubernetes uh, file, YAML file, you can, you can import it on Podman, and it will recreate everything on your local server. So if you have a pod, it will create pod, it will create container inside, <laughs> it will create everything. So it is very nice if you want to test a container, um, a Kubernetes file on your local environment, if you want to, to, to do some action and see what's happened. Before to export it in the, cluster, in the Kubernetes cluster, you can test it uh, locally uh, before. And uh, it is an in import um, feature. And the export feature is the same way in the other um, uh, way. Um, so you, you can do all the infrastructure on your local environment. You can create your pod, in, po create your container that you put inside your pod, etc. Et and when you are done, you just have to export to Kubernetes and it will create a file that you will be able to use on, the, on your Kubernetes cluster. So it's uh, very interesting. About the bonus, um, Podman, with Podman, you can also uh, manage virtual machine. So uh, it's, a, it's a light way to, to use virtual machine, but uh, when you want to create a container on Mac OS or on Windows, it will create a virtual machine and spawn the container inside. But uh, you can also create this virtual machine on your uh, Linux server or Linux laptop. And the virtual machine is interesting because it's a core OS. So it will create a core OS. Core OS, it's an immutable operating system. So it's a perfect operating system to run a container. And you, you can play with that. Um, it also supports ignition file, so with the initial file you can modify and configure the core OS uh, operating system that with this it can, it can, um, it can be matched with what uh, you need uh, to test. So um, I've already used it on the past, it's, uh, it's an interesting feature. 
And if you lack the UI, you also have a Podman uh, desktop. So uh, the Podman desktop, it's, uh, it's a web, it's an interface, and on this interface, you will see all the container, all your image. You can interact with them. You can access to the log easily. You can directly go to the console of the container, and you also have a way to manage your re registry, uh, manage image, um, a lot of nice features. So if you like graphical uh, interface, uh, Podman desktop, it's, it's nice. For more information, so we have um, Dan Walsh. It's uh, for me the master of Podman presentation. He did a lot of presentation. Um, this uh, website is just here. He, on this website, of this website, you have a lot of resources about Podman, about ecosystem, and uh, and about security. So it's a, it's a really a, a gold gold mine. And um, you can also access to all the, the last presentations that he did about Podman. It's a uh, very, very nice presentation. And he also uh, published some few, few weeks ago an uh, amazing, um, amazing book. So with a lot of example, um, it's, uh, it's very docu well documented. Upon, uh, Dan, Dan Walsh is uh, one of the um, uh, core developers of Podman. Uh, since the beginning, so that's why that's why he, he knows very well the, the project. And on his book, uh, you also have a, a comparison, a very deep comparison between Docker and Podman, if you are interested. So uh, for the conclusion, uh, after five years of de development, uh, Podman is definitely uh, ready to be used. Uh, it's secure out of the box. Uh, the integration with uh, Kubernetes is, is very good. Um, on my day-to-day -day job, I'm working with partners. Um, they, they, are, they are using um, Fedora, CentOS, Rail distribution. And, and they are very happy that in Podman, you can use um, Systemd and you can use uh, SLinux without issue. So uh, if, you, if you are using this kind of um, of uh, technology, it can, it can be a, a nice uh, project for you, uh, Podman. And the integration with uh, Kubernetes, it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's very easy to test um, a, a sample or uh, if you, before to, to put everything in the Kubernetes cluster, you can test it uh, very easily uh, locally. And uh, thank you uh, for your time. Um, I'm just finished. So if you have questions, and Go ahead. And if not, uh, it's time to eat, I think. <laughs> oh, you have a question? I hope it's not a question about Docker. Uh, hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, it has something also related to Docker. On Docker, you can configure the logging, <laughs> the logging driver. Uh, at the daemon level, in the daemon uh, config file, or uh, as a flag when you do a Docker run. Is there any workaround for Podman okay, to you, disable or enable can the logs? Can you question? Because it's, with your mask, it's a bit... Con <coughs> ah, okay, sorry. Oh. Yes. So on Docker, you can configure the Docker, uh, the logging driver uh, on a daemon file or uh, as a flag during the Docker run command. Is there any workaround for Podman to disable or enable the logs for the containers? Hmm. I see. Uh, it's a bit different in um, in, in Podman because we don't we don't have um, a centralized daemon, so uh, you cannot have a way to modify the log on all the container because each uh, user has its own log. Finally. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for your question. No other question? Perfect, so uh, thank you again, and uh, have a nice, nice uh, lunch. <laughs>